You're listening to Razor Riffs with Keith Razor and Alan Lee right here on LA Talk Radio. All right, Rifters, welcome to the show. Uh, subscribe, brain review on Apple Podcasts. Follow us on social media at Razor Riffs. Uh, no stand up because of COVID, so I don't have any dates to plug. I think it'll be a while to uh, get back into the groove. Keith Razor with my uh, trusty sidekick, Alan Lee. Alan Lee, Hello. how are you? Thank you. Very good. No? Very good. And uh, you staying safe? Oh, yeah. Yeah, I am. I um, Have you taken your uh, shot yet? Uh, I did, yeah. But uh, I think that's something yeah. the guests might be interested in. So I'll save that story. No, I just took the first one. I have to wait a month for the second one. Are you feeling okay? You didn't get a headache or something? I'm feeling tired, but yeah, I'm not 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 like uh You look you look fine. Yeah, I appreciate that. Do we should uh, probably introduce our guest in case he hops in without us knowing, but uh today we have a great show. It's going to be fun. Uh our guest has been in let me get his uh credits ready. Our guest has been in in the TV show Hand of God. Uh, Everybody Hates Chris, where he played the role of Risky and the movie Last Holiday. Uh, he is also a recurring role on the TV Netflix show The Upshaws, which uh, his episodes haven't been released yet. The great uh, Michael Estime. I said it right, right? Estime. Yep. All right. And uh, so he's going to be joining us, and it's going to be fun. Um, yeah, man. My sisters are like, uh, I don't know what they're doing. But yeah, so it's going to be fun. Um, what was I going to tell you? Something very important. I forgot. Is that a side effect of the vaccine? You forget I don't know. I hope not, because that's not going to help us if we both uh can't remember what we were going to say. I know. But um, uh, I don't know. Some people, a woman died. She was 39 years old. She, she took it. She was in perfect health, athletic, and no weight problems. And uh, she kicked off after she took it. So I'm, I'm quite, fra- I'm quite fearful. Uh, I don't like, yeah. I don't like shit being put in my body. Uh, I know you and I are a little bit different on that, but uh well, no, I, I'm I'm on board. The reason why I have to do it is because of my day job. I'm an essential worker right now. Yeah, and so everybody there has to take it. Yeah, and then, okay. you know, it's dude. Did you hear about this L.A. hero pay five dollars? Like all these Ralphs and stuff, they're closing they're down. Closed. Yeah, like everyone says, more money is good. It's actually not. It's screwing with them, dude. Well, the fifteen dollar an hour mandate failed. Yeah, eight Democrats said, "Screw you, we don't want it," and it fucked over. This isn't a Republican or Democrat debate. This is a the city voted for grocery store workers extra pay for hero pay, which they are heroes. I'm not saying they're not heroes, but what I'm saying is the the grocery stores like Albertsons, Food for Less, and Ralphs. They're shutting down because they don't want to pay that extra five dollars. What do you think that is? I think because uh, companies are greedy, man. I mean, it doesn't take Let a rock, rocket science to know that. Let me ask you something. Why did it fail in Congress across the country? Not just, I, just not just in one city. I'll tell you w- w- the math on that. Yeah, five bucks or whatever above or, or whatever above the whatever people are making. An that's hour. Right. Keep in mind, it's an hour. So that's eight hours. Hour. So that's, that's forty dollars a person. That's a lot of money. You and I are talking about LA uh, radio and fifty bucks. Oh, you know, did you? You know, can you imagine at that level? If you have to pay all your employees an extra amount at the end of the month, and you're still selling 10, 10 cans of Campbell soup at the at at the end of the month, that five or whatever the amount is, is not covered. No. So they didn't understand that. They think, oh, well, but you said, I sold 10 cans of Campbell's soup. I didn't sell 11 or 12. Yeah. But but you want me to sell 10 more, but I didn't do it. What do you want me to do? Rob a bank? And then, 
also, since you said Rob, you know, we don't usually get into this type of conversation on the podcast, but it's very interesting because uh, ro- uh, robbery is at an all time high in the grocery business this year. Oh, I and I, I know that because I work at a grocery store. Ro- robbery in 2020, 2021 are at an all time high since 2004. So that just tells you how, you know, the companies just, they just can't afford to pay it. And I think that it sucks that the cities, I feel like the cities are just doing this because they don't like the grocery store and they, the grocery store workers and they treat them as heroes. They're making them lose their jobs. That's what I'm trying to say. They were trying to get them extra money though. Yeah, but it doesn't take a rocket science to know that if a company's, it's kind of like a comedy club. You know what I mean? You got to pay uh, the the food servers, the con, you know, all that stuff. The sound guy. Well, that's 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 the math of it, and there's nothing yeah. you can do. Two two dollars is two bucks. Exactly. Uh, if you're not, you can't just can't do it. You can't. It's not magic money. Yeah. Uh, these think these people think they're playing Monopoly. Exactly. Okay. Yes. That's, that's not how it works. Yeah. Yeah. I I do feel. Right now they're playing. They think it's like a it's monopoly money. That's a good saying. We should have a new shirt that says Alan Lee Monopoly. You know, I never played that game as much as uh, other kids did. <coughs> what was your What was your board game of choice? Well, I'm going to tell you. It's kind of weird. I liked Parcheesi. I liked Checkers. But I did like Parcheesi. I know it's, you know, you remember Parcheesi? No, what was that about? Oh, Parcheesi was a dice game where you had to jump uh, all the way around the board. Uh, and, you know, people were chasing after you. And it was a dice game of chance. And uh, you can type that in. It was, I loved it. I loved it. What's it called? Parse. What's that? What was it called again? Parcheesi. Parcheesi. You type it in P A R. C H I S I, I think. And uh, that was one of them. And then, of course, um, the strange one was with the marbles that I never could understand. It was called um, damn it. Backgammon. Yeah, that one. Well, that came later. That's oh, okay. And that was very popular in, in bars in Europe, probably in comedy clubs. And uh, it was insane. People would like spend hours and they were like, God, it was like the whole room with, with these, these backgammon uh, tables. I used to be really good at backgammon when I was, um, I don't remember how to play now, but when I was like 13, 14, I used to play with my mom Mm -hmm. and, uh, I always beat her. And that when, when, yeah. And when she had the stroke, that's when Mm -hmm. we used to play in the hot, you know, in her hospital bed and stuff. Yeah. But, uh, if, if you, Tell, show me a backgammon board right now. I wouldn't even know the rules. I would like. I would be like, "What? What's up with all these marbles?" I wouldn't remember. Par- I played Parcheesi with my sister. They had to completely in my in my niece, two nieces, and I had to completely go over the rules, and they helped me, and it came back. But uh, you know, you, you don't you don't memorize board games like that. I mean, now the one thing, believe it or not, that is new to me, and I've only in the last ten years, is poker. Oh, okay. I never played poker. Even in college, I was in a fraternity. I couldn't stand it. They would sit down. I said, I don't, you know, they're they're putting, I I couldn't handle it. It would freak me out. You were in a fraternity? Yeah, I was a Delta Sig. I was actually second vice president for a short period at the University of Houston. So uh, it was like, I I never knew this. You ever see the movie Animal House with Belushi? Yeah, yeah. That's me. You were Belushi? My friend was. I wasn't like that crazy, but I was fairly crazy. <laughs> and uh, we had a stripper one night, and that maniac guy, what's, what was his name? Um, he put her head out the window in the second floor. I started screaming. <laughs> he, said, he said, he said, he said, she's, he said, he said she was unfaithful. He was out of his mind. He was drunk, scared the fuck out of me. These oh, guys no. are maniacs. And then, and then another time, no, no, it was it was pretty fucking crazy. I realize that now. I uh... so this was back in your crazy days, eh? Yeah, yeah. And I, I was so crazy. I'm going to tell you something. Uh, I 
I would actually drive out on a Saturday night before the party started at eight o'clock. Mm. And I would drive to a truck stop because I like this waitress. She wasn't even educated or anything. You know, these guys, you know, you had to be educated. And I would drive out to this, you know, fucking truck stop, you know, 18 wheelers and shit. And I would go in there and have an apple pie at seven o'clock with her. And this is great apple pie. We talked and everything. And I says, well, I got to go. I got to go to my fraternity party. I never said you can come with me. It was kind of weird. And then I would go to the fraternity party and they never knew that like an hour and a half before I was miles away, like about 40 miles uh -huh. at the truck stop with the waitress and the big truck driver. And, uh, so anyway, I would, that's how I partied. I'm uh, I'm still listening. I'm just, uh, no, I don't, you know, I don't I'm just, know uh, where is he? he <laughs> I'm texting her right now. Her? No, no, his manager. You scared me. <laughs> no, I know you, you, you trannies and all of a sudden it's a he, she, or it wasn't a guy, it was a girl. I hate that. I really, I hate that when you, when you, you, you do that. It's really mean. Uh, okay. Uh, so he should be coming anytime soon. Michael Estime. That, I think that's cool how he, because I always thought it was, um, it was uh, Estime or something, but it's Estime. I don't care what you thought. Just remember it's Estime. We don't care what we thought it was. Cause... <laughs> oh, wait. I think he's in. I got it. You ready? Michael Estime. Estime. Right? Estime. Right. That's perfect. All right. What do you, what do you... He's been. He's in. Where is he? Oh, here he is. Artie, hey, Mike. Artie Bamani is here. Who's that? That's Mike hey, Estime. Is yes, Mike in? Estime. That's his name, Mike Estime. Yeah, he's, he's right there. How come it says Artie? Artie, Artie but, but. Oh yeah, I'm using my uh, my my wife's. Uh... Oh, my bad. <laughs> yeah, that's why. Yeah, hey, sorry Mike, about that. You, pal. Sorry about that. No, no, not at all. Yeah. Have you uh, take yeah, time my out. kid used my computer, and then I had to. Uh, well, you're, Try you're to awesome. work around that. So, uh, yes, I'm here though. But uh, <laughs> thank you for having me. I appreciate it. Sorry thank about the late. Oh no, worry. We were just uh, we were thank rifting about coming. board games. Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah. Okay. And what board game are you Monopoly up to so far? That I we we've all played Monopoly, right? Oh, Monopoly. I'm not a Monopoly guy. Yeah. You know, we, you know for sure. You know, it's it's always in your face with the money. We were talking about money and yeah yeah i mean for someone that hasn't never had a lot and then you're know, just taking my properties and my hotels I'm like, it's pretty so brutal it just shows i'm not good in business in board no. games or in life it sucks uh, do you know how they tried to make it like uh more fun by making it like star wars and shit that's what i thought was funny <laughs> what yeah star wars like monopoly the star wars monopoly, monopoly. yeah okay <laughs> uh, yeah, they had everything. They had the. Uh, the All right. Show. So you had like Mandalorian V Bucks or something? Uh, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> okay. It's uh, like $200 past Darth Vader or something. <laughs> I don't know. Uh oh, someone's going to the Death Star. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. uh, and, and Mike, I wanted to ask you something. Do, do you believe in ghosts? I do. You do? I do. I do. They have a, like a weird ghost story because I have a crazy one that I'll tell you after yours, and you're gonna flip out. Uh, I don't. Well, there was one, there was two actually, and okay. one happened actually today. Same here. So, okay. Oh okay, yeah, this yeah, is good. So good. The first one, because my mom's used to say, you know, say your prayers because before you go to sleep, say your prayers before you go to sleep. So you know, I was you know I was as they call it in the zone of prayer. I was just deep into. It. I'm like, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Heavenly Father. I went. I went through all the names, Yahweh. How about whatever the names were, and I was so into it. And then I opened up my eyes, and then I looked to my right, and I saw this like figure sitting on my bed, oh, yeah. just like a shadow. And I know I was, it was because me and my brother, we shared a room, and I saw it, and I, and you know, I got so scared. I just jumped in the bed. Oh my God. I, I just, 
covered my head and I was just shivering. I was like, I'm never praying again. I'm never praying again. This That's the last time I was like scared of religion. And the yeah. second time happened today, I was just doing some work, just looking over my emails, doing a little writing. And I felt like this cold breeze, like a chill. Right. I was like, and then I'm looking around, is the window open? I'm like, no, the window's there. It's closed. And I sat back down. Then I felt like a, like someone just passed in front of me, but it was like, not like gas or nothing like that. It was just like, and I was like, what the, and then I felt the heat and I was like, is the air conditioning on? Wow. And I just started looking and I was by myself. So that, and I, but then I said, okay, I remember the, uh, the, the first time it happened. I said, just play it cool. Just play it cool. Let it happen. Maybe this is a, a sign, but that's my only two I have thus far. But that, after that, I was like, okay, they're definitely, something out there's something beyond where we are right now i there's definitely a ghost because i think a ghost is haunting me because uh like with this all happened within a week okay this week i i uh i lost my medication right you know because uh i don't mean to brag but i have asperger's so i take xanax (laughs) and uh so Take Don't worry, no, my, just, my son, yeah, my son it takes ADHD pills. So, yeah. <laughs> yeah. so I might have to like steal your son's pills or something. Yeah, no, you, <laughs> yeah, please don't. No, I'm, I'm yeah. sorry. To, we got a time now. He has his concerta. We make sure that it's uh, hit, hidden right beside my my hemp oils and my gummies. Oh, <laughs> oh, exactly. So you understand, like when you can't find them, you freak out, right? Right. And, and then uh, my rent money, because I was going to pay my landlady, right? Mm-hmm. And it's all gone, right? And then my wallet's gone, and now my car keys are gone. Like, so something, but my car is still in the driveway. So, like, I'm being haunted by, like, a, a ghost or something, because I, I'm not the type of person to lose things at all. You know what I mean? Oh. Yeah. yeah. It could be some very, but you could have, like, a ratatouille situation. Oh. You know, where the rats just come and just start taking your shit or yeah. I'm, I'm just thinking of something. I mean, because we used to have a lot of roaches when I was growing up. Sure. Yeah. And I was like, oh, man, the roaches done took my damn sandwich, you know, <laughs> and no. they could have it. So uh, mm, that's, I know. That's, that's weird. You better ask your landlady. Maybe she's uh, she's trying yeah. to give you a hint or something. Ask her. <laughs> well, well no, because, you know, uh, she knows I'm always on time or whatever. So she's giving me a break. But like, oh, it's that's just- good. Yeah, it's just so weird because, like, this has never happened in all 33 years of my life. You know what I mean? Wow. Well, you know, Keith, I mean, you could say it's ghosts or maybe you're just careless. How about that? <laughs> let's just, <laughs> let's just take responsibility. You could go. throw those extraterrestrial, <laughs> you know, side. Yeah, you know, a ghost took my stuff. Okay. <laughs> and the dog ate my homework. And no, honey, we didn't have sex. You know, she just was on me while she was naked and I was naked. It just kind of happened. <laughs> and, uh, all right, let's just let's just be adults about this. This is what this is what the pandemic has shown me. Just there to take responsibility go. for my for my reckless little carelessness. So exactly, yeah. there you well, go. Well, I have a couple questions for you, and i i wanted to I wanted to start with um, all for love because it, it seems like that was a a short. Then you made it a TV show. Then you made it a movie, right? Well, we started as a short. And it went to a web series. And mm-hmm. currently, we are pitching it. And Good. hopefully, it will be a movie. But currently, we're trying to pitch it as a TV show where I'm currently writing it, uh, rewriting it up. Um, the way it happened was um, my eight, my management saw it uh, on uh, Amazon. I mm-hmm. uploaded Amazon Prime. Got some decent um, responses from it. Mm-hmm. And my manager was flying back. And, you know, you're, you know, in, you know, flying back. You just click on some movies that you've never seen. Mm-hmm. And that just happened to be on there. Mm-hmm. And then he was like, hey, uh, you didn't tell me you did this show. I was like, well, you never asked. I right. never thought this was like a topic of conversation. So he said, I think we could do something with this, which is, you know, making it to a show, into a pilot. So uh, this point, matter of fact, at this moment, I'm writing it up so we can use it after, of course, pilot season, whenever that is, um, to start Net- pitching it to networks. And possibly, you know, because there's so many platforms, to get it out there and get it to the masses. Um, and no one knows awful of is um, loosely based on my life where uh, I am currently married to an Indian woman, South Asian Indian woman. And the trials and tribulations we go through being from different cultures, backgrounds, um, religions, 
but uh, same headaches, which is annoying parents. It was yeah. very good so, chemistry. It was very good, chem very good chemistry. In the, oh, in thank you. Yeah, no, it's 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 really cool. Before I, I've been pitching this idea actually ever since I've been moved to LA about twelve years ago. So, yeah. um, and then it just kind of died down. Things, uh, other things happen, family, life, all that other stuff. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And um, yeah, once the pandemic hit, you know, I said, you know what? Uh, there's no reason anymore. Let's start writing it back up. And a friend of mine said, hey, I want to, I like this idea and uh, we're doing a new twist on it um, where the parents are, you know, as you know, as the parents get older, the kids become the parents and the parents become the kids. Uh -huh. So, you know, has that dynamic of family and responsibility and, uh, you know, gender, um, you know, gender norms and just norms trying to, you know, de just de um, peel the onions off that. So it has a lot of, of the things that I like to see in a show mm. and to make fun of it, but at the same time, make a statement, but also um, like Keenan Ivan Wayans or all the other comics that I've uh, really um, admired, they said, if you're going to make a point, just like Chappelle does, make it funny. Yeah. You know, there's no there's no point in just, you know, making a statement and standing on my soapbox. And this is what we as American citizens. And then it's not funny. You right. Know, you say, OK, that's great. Uh, is this a state of the union or a comedy club? So uh, that's what I like in all the shows. That's why. I, and I'm trying to base it off of shows that back in the day that I like was Archie Bunker, All in the Family, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Jeffersons. Jefferson. And, um, you know, a lot of mostly a Norman Lear show, Blackish. If you go to move it up, mixed dish. That's mm -hmm. like my show. When I watch me, my kids love mixed dish because they see them because they're mixed dish. Right. So that's a great thing. So that's what my shows. Uh, that's what we're leaning on. That's where uh, we're uh, moving forward with, and hopefully, cross our fingers that it's gonna be. Uh, it's gonna move to the next level and pick it up and see where it goes from there. Beautiful. Now, is it easier? Is it easier for you to write something like that since you've already written it before? I mean, like, how, like, how's that process in your mind? It's, uh, it actually is easier because you have the foundation. Uh -huh. It's like writing a joke, right? It's like you, uh, it's like if you have an old joke that you've been using, and then you add a tag to it, yeah. and then another tag to it, All so bad. that two minute joke now becomes a four to six to eight to ten minute joke, because you've added so many tags. Like, oh my god, now I have a whole team based around this one premise. Same thing with the show where I already know what the foundation is, which is my relationship with my current wife. All I have to do now is like, okay, I don't have to scrap everything. I can say, okay, these are the bare bones. Let me just add a little few ingredients here, take this out, put that in. So right. it does make it easier. So I'm not you know, scrambling my brain. Well, what if this would happen? What if this would happen? No, I already kind of know where it's going. All I have to do is now add different situations to it, like yeah. adding tags. So it does make it easier doing going that process. Oh, that's pretty. Are cool. you, are you thinking of? Uh, this is a selfish question, for myself, but uh, yeah. like, uh, uh, you know, like taxi, where you you're gonna have guests, uh, <laughs> guest spots come in. Come uh, in you know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah. Well, it depends. Like, uh, are we also have. Uh, well, the way we have the show, we do want a guest uh, guest stars, Alan. Wink, wink. <laughs> Uh, yeah. I wish you'd, why you say stars <laughs> well i mean i, I could say guests and then eventually yeah, yeah. become well, a star yeah. whatever yeah whatever it is but we do have guests come through uh because the way we i, I like to have a show which is to be, keep it fresh and when you have a new energy come in like uh i always relate everything to um stand up right. because with stand up you know you have a new energy i mean if you've gone on the road, you know, sometimes you'll have three or two shows to do that night. But each, and you might do the same material, but each crowd presents a new energy. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So that's how I like to approach this, this show. Each mm -hmm. person will provide a new energy and a new uh, spin on what the situation or the story will be that week. So we, like with this one, it's uh, it's a high, uh, just loosely, it's loosely based on my life, but it's based on me being, because I do like to cook, but it's a mm. uh, like a celebrity chef. Mm -hmm. So we, each celebrity chef, we have um, a new people coming in and he has new help coming in. Oh. So that brings almost like um, old school Murphy Brown, 
where oh, she always had a new, yeah, where she always had a new. Um, That's right. Yeah, she had a new secretary, a new uh, assistant that came in to help her. And each time that person would get fired or the person just hated Murphy, the same way here where I get fired or the person gets caught on fire or he just, you know, he's dipping into the, the new recipe or you know, something. But it's always something, it's always moving along where it's a running gag. The running it's a running bit. Gag. Right. So that way, you know, you get new actors up there you know, showing their chops, or like Seinfeld, he always mm. had someone new come in. Jerry and the, those, the crew was the core, but he always had someone new in the city because city's a big place. That's how Brian, you see Brian Cranston and oh, well, you know, and all these other actors. You're like, oh my god, I forgot they were on this show. When yeah, you watch it, and now they're huge. So, yeah, it's uh, it, we will have you know various people, but again, let's let me first at least write it up. And let's get picked up first, Alan, before we start yes, going yeah, down. Before we start getting Alan late the job. Exactly. exactly. <laughs> right, right. Uh, now, Mike, I, I had a question because, uh, you know, I mean, let's be honest. It's been a, a rough year for us comedians. Uh, mm -hmm. You know, um, I used to see you at, at the Laugh Factory all the time. And now I'm seeing you on Talk Zoom the all the time. So, like, <laughs> what what's uh, – like how how is your mind transitioning to that? Because I cannot transition to Zoom. I did one Zoom show and I was like, oh God, I I hate it. Oh, uh, I you know what, Keith? I said the same thing. I I did it too. I was like, I can't do this. I I it's just because number one, I'm a physical comic and I like yeah. Um, yeah. interacting with the audience and I do a lot of facial expressions. Mm -hmm. Now, if you don't have a strong Wi-Fi, that won't translate. You know, <laughs> especially when. You know, if someone you freeze and all of a sudden like, oh, you you froze, you froze. <laughs> is he still there? Is he still there? Yeah. Oh, there he goes. And then you've already moved on to the next bit, or the person you know you'll do a bit and then you'll hear delayed laughter, so so it was it was really weird, but I the the positives about it is that um, a lot of times I relied on my physicality, which I, I I'm still going to use I, because when I an act or story I like to become, you know, what I'm talking about, which is either a, tent a temper tantrum kid or, you know, uh, you know, a dog, red, you know, looking confused at you when you're taking a dump or something like that. You know, I like to do things because I like to, the, the audience laughter feeds me and then I can really move into and get, really get into the character almost become almost becoming into a one man show. Mm -hmm. So what the Zoom has taught me was, okay, my words are what's going to move and make you laugh. So right. that was an exercise in me. I'm like, okay, so this has to, my writing skills have to get stronger from here. So now my writing has to be as strong as my physical mm -hmm. prowess on stage. So right. it has to match up. I can't have one stronger than the other. So just in case, you know, you know, sometimes I'm not gonna be doing all this physical shit and it's not working. And I'm busting my head and blood is like, you guys don't think it's funny? Really? Yeah. Uh, but at least if my words have some weight to it, then I'm like, okay, I don't need to get as physical. I could just use my words and have the people, instead of me acting out, have them pictured in their minds. And that way it enhances the joke. Yeah. So I've been working on that more so. But yeah, I mean, but. All in all, I need to. We need as community need to have a crowd. Yeah, we just exactly. need to have that live interaction. I mean, yes, I can do my jokes and I bounce out of there because okay, I've done my joke. But now, you know, now I'm to the point where you know I might hang out with the comics and kick it because um, I realize that social that social interaction and just you know shooting the shit with the comics. It's I do miss it, and then yeah. also the crowds I do miss because it's nothing like it, man. It, it really yeah. isn't. So, yeah, it's been tough, but uh, but it's it, it, I've adjusted to it. Like the first couple of times, I was just like you, Keith. I was like, I, I can't, I can't do this. Yeah. I would turn down Zoom shows. Like I'm not doing it anymore. I can't do it. It sucks. But then afterwards, I was like, Well, Mike, you know, everything's shut down unless you go to Arizona and do a gig for like you know 200 bucks with six feet apart with people laughing through the mask. Everybody sounded like Bane. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, I can't. I can't hear that. So, 
And then you yeah. lose the two hundred dollars, you know, just on gas or just on, exactly. Just getting there, you're already two hundred in the hole. Like really, <laughs> God, I'm such a comedy whore. I'm just like giving it up for nothing. This is just sad on my part. So, you know, but again, I'm. Uh, but it looks like everything's about to start trending upwards. I see some guys, some comics starting to do shows here and there, rooftop comedies and stuff. So, hopefully, I'll start doing that and start doing some shows here and there. Beautiful. Yeah, I just think like for guys like uh, me, because I'm I'm not a headliner, I'm a feature. I think mm -hmm. like I think uh, it's uh, it kind of fucks comics like me up like when it's coming back right now because I'm not good enough to get on those shows because I can't sell tickets. You know what I mean? Right, right, right. No, I feel you know it's a uh, it's a hard sell, man. But it's 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 all in the comedy grind. You know. Yeah. I mean, I'm I'm a headliner myself, but most of the clubs that I perform at, you know, they're not they're closed, or I, I don't have a relationship with the booker. Yeah. So that makes it hard. So I have to call other headlining comics like, hey, can you refer me to yada yada yada? Yeah. And that makes and and the thing about you know they I've asked to do a drive through comedy, and I don't know if you've been asked for that. That's that's difficult too, dude, for guys and for people to be sitting in a car. And, oh. And, yeah. you know, and I was supposed to get honk a horn or flick a you know beam. I'm like, oh, yeah. Oh I was supposed yeah. to do it with Jay Moore at Irvine, but I I said uh, I was like, you know, Jay, I I I don't think that's my type of humor because I I can't hear laughter. You know what I mean? So right, right, exactly. I'm like I, I, a honk of a a honk of a Tesla or a Prius. <laughs> Yeah, or 1975 Accord if they still make them. I don't know, but it's not going to be, you know. Oh, hey, okay, yeah, all right. Oh, I made the Beamer. I made the Beamer laugh. Okay, there it is. I yeah. need to hear, you know. I need to hear, you know, the pounding of the table or the, you know, that funny laugh you hear in the back room where you can make a comment on that. Are you okay? You know, <laughs> things like that are what i miss so i'm at i'm at the point where i miss heckling and bombing you know what I mean? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> that's one thing on on a zoom show you can bomb but it's not the same as a bomb all you get is a camera just go off yeah or a person <laughs> just walk off or you hear a flood a toilet flush or they start vacuuming <laughs> you know, oh, like, like am i bombing on this or the person just has a lot of errands and he's, i'm just white noise in the back which is very <laughs> insulting being a black guy because you yeah. can't be black noise and a, and a brother's talking. I mean, come on. At least, be, <laughs> at least let it be black noise. So Now, uh, another question I had for you is because uh, you're also a great actor. Uh, about your, like, auditioning techniques, do you think, like, auditioning, is, like, especially right now, are you going on auditions? Is it, like, we're doing it through camera virtual or like how well, do you that's that's right actually that i'm actually after this i'm actually you know fortunate enough to get an audition and but that's actually been um pretty standard because i usually even though i go in go into the room physically they're they're putting you on tape anyway right so i actually like that because um if you don't like the tape that you did you're like ah screw that i'm not gonna put that out. i'm gonna put my best foot forward on this one so you can edit, you can cut, you can paste. You're your own editor, right? right. Just like being a comic, you know, you you could edit, cut, paste, put stuff together, and be like, okay, this is it. And then um, my team looks at it, and they say, okay, yeah, we like this, we don't like this, we'll submit this. So that way, you're not um, you're not under as much pressure because when you're, you know, the people are there, you know, you're going through your lines, and you're sitting there, you're like, okay, take your time, and you know, there's like three other people in the back. But because I've been doing it uh, long enough, now I know, you know, to take a breath, take your time, because this is your time and you have three minutes. So I just approach it the same way. It's just mm -hmm. that now I do actually like it. I, I actually hope they keep it this way because I'd rather go in for the callback or something. Right. And that way, you know, I'm like, OK, that was my first. I already know the material. I mean, more uh, I'm at ease. Now I'm going for the callback and. Do it that way, you, you know, you especially know, with commercials. Commercials are the worst. You're a comedic it's actor. There's comics that can't do that. They can't. Uh, they they always get complaints that they change stuff, you know, and they're not. Uh, but you're a comedic actor. See, that it's it's a uh, in my opinion that's a that's a, a different deal. Um, well, yeah, because well, was well, as we know, yeah, yeah comedy's hard. Yeah, comedy. Yeah, as a comedic yeah. actor, you have to be careful because when you're a stand-up comic, you feel like, oh, I can make it funnier. Yeah, right. that's thank you. 
That yeah. yes, yes. And that's the thing you don't want. You and because and you gotta forget you will forget that the writer, you know, they he or she put their like life, you know, life's blood in this script. Yeah. So for you to say, uh, you know what, not good. <laughs> don't worry, I got this. You yeah. know, that's like going in Emeralds or one of these uh top you know, you know the Hell's Kitchen, the dude from Hell's Kitchen and going like, Yeah, that looks good, but you know what? Step it aside. I think I could make it better. What the fuck? Get out of my kitchen. Get the fuck out. You know. Go back at the In and Out Burger and, and exactly right. They're like, get the ass out. Or going to In and Out Burger. Like, yeah, you know what? Do that. Let me get back there. I got you guys. Take take five. I'll do this. So <laughs> I look at it that way because when you do that to a writer, basically well, what you're telling that writer is like, not you good. aren't funny enough, and you're not as funny as I am. Right. So you have to make sure you put that ego to the side. And like I was really, like I said, I was really everything to be a comic. Don't run the light. When you do that, it's like you're running the light because there's other comics waiting Excellent. and you're doing extra That's or, right. or like what I call it, you're jerking off on stage because now it's just for you. You're not doing it for the audience. It's just making, exactly. it's just making yeah. you feel good. Yeah. So, and, it, and then I, uh, I attribute that and I uh, relate that to the writer that writes all that stuff down for you. Just do what's on the page. Now, if they say, hey, could you add something to it? Or put your own spin on it, or you can improv a little. When it's like, Mother, may I? Oh, sure. You know, now I'm the vampire. You allowed me to come in. You've invited me in. Now I can get to do my shit, and let's see what happens. And maybe there's magic. Maybe there isn't. But um, that's how I approach it because um, I and I had to learn that. I really did. I had to learn that by going to acting classes and. And also, my acting school, when I went to Howard University, they said, yeah, look, you're Holy doing too much. Hell, Pull it yeah. back. Pull it yeah. back. And when you do do that, sometimes less is more. Mm -hmm. Do you do you prefer auditioning for comedy or drama roles? Both. Yeah. I like both. Yeah, I like both. Um, drama is a bit easier. Like I said, to me, comedy mm -hmm. is hard. Okay. Comedy is hard because you know where the funny is, but you don't know what the director's or writer sensibility is does do they like it high do they like it flat line you know you know flat. Right. Do they do not, not over the top something like uh i look at um jason bateman who's not over the top but he's so funny because the way he delivers the lines mm -hmm. and just really uh like in a, a very sarcastic manner or do you right. want like a zach galifianakis where he's like uh, all over the place you know um or like a dave Chappelle, which is like a little low key but he's still funny um, so that's the challenge when you do comedy. Whereas drama, um, it's more tapping into an emotion and trying to um, kind of range that emo rein that emotion in right. and controlling it and not having it uh, overwhelm you as you're doing the scene. Mm -hmm. Not to say that drama isn't hard. It's just a different. It's a different genre. And I, I, I for me, because it's so far away from what I do anyway. And honestly, comedians are dramatic in a sense because that's why we are comedians. We take our drama and just make it funny. That's yeah. all you do. You know, we're all, you know, a friend of my a comic said this to myself, I forgot his name. I wish I gave him props, but um, he said, we're all broken vases. We're all cracked vases. There's yeah. something wrong with us for us to do this. And say, please mm -hmm. like me, laugh at my pain. You know? It, it's kind of how like, when you hear that uh, comedians can't be good actors because they're just funny, how I look at it is comedians could probably be the best actors because what they're really doing on stage while people are laughing, I don't know about you, but when I'm telling uh, my comedy, I'm not laughing. I'm actually crying because it's mm. just so, you know what I mean? It's right. like. Right. It's, it's that old adage. You laugh to keep them crying. You yeah. Know? And the thing is that like, if you have people laughing with you, then you'll, keep you from crying you know yeah. i mean and for people that just say they you know community can't be at, oh yeah because i mean you can't tell that to robin williams you can't tell that to richard Pryor, um even eddie murphy recently yeah um you know they did some uh, jamie fox to jamie name a few fox, dave chappelle. i mean yeah dave chappelle to name a few i mean these are deep deep thinkers Thinkers. i mean i've had some of the best conversations with uh, dudes that are athletes and comics right. because uh, the outside world sees them as one thing but we in the comedy world know it's much deeper than that because a lot of them have you know a lot of issues oh, like yeah. you, said, 
we we talk about stuff on stage that no one, mm -hmm. no one would have the guts to say this in front of a, a packed house. Yeah. You know, either they either put it in a book or a Facebook post or blog or something because it's in the comfort I, of their own home. I so. do a lesbian impression and it tears my guts out. And, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, Kenny. Yeah. Uh, are you a lesbian at the Allen? Uh, I put it back and I pull it. You want to go out? And uh, I tell them it's a work in progress if they don't laugh. But no, we okay. love it. The men look at me; they don't like it, but the women love it, which tells you something. Yeah. Well, yes. We 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 have a lot of work to do. You know. Uh, yeah, we'll we, work we on it. it. Yeah, we work on that. His, his guest role on your show, he has to work on that impression. Oh. Yeah, please do. Yeah, dude, because he was, he was mansplaining lesbianism to me. I don't know how, <laughs> I don't know how that He's worked right there. Concept but, uh, with all this trans. <laughs> I mean, you know, exactly. Uh, you know, all the trans. Hey, you got you to gotta, you gotta take the good with the bad. I'm trying to be as open as possible, even though good. it keeps changing every day. It's just. It's not easy. I feel like, no, it isn't. I feel like I'm in a game of double dutch and I keep tripping over myself every fucking time. Like, do I do it now? <laughs> hey, she's a man. No, she's a woman. It's a he, oh she, we, uh, yeah, I know yes. that's the, the he, she. Yeah. You know, I, had, I had a question about everybody hates Chris. You're, yeah. you're, you're a series regular on the show and you're also a comic and it's also a funny show, but it also, it was one of those shows that also had a lot of drama to it too. How mm -hmm. did you, uh, like, did you have the freedom as a comic to to improvise or twist that your your humor and your jokes in a way, or did you just leave it how it was? Most of the time, I left it the way it was, uh -huh. um, and I would try to uh, go with what my acting partner or my scene partner in that scene would do. Mm -hmm. So, and and uh, we were lucky enough to have a lot of directors that gave us freedom to be as natural as possible. Not just say, stick to the page, stick to the page. I wrote this, stick to the, you know, they didn't want to do that. They want you to be open and add something to the scene. Cause when you're, you know, if you're in a, uh, like a bar scene or, or like we were uh, many times a barbershop scene, right. you want the energy to be as natural as possible, not choreographed. Now you don't want it to look so stiff and stale. So mm -hmm. we added things here and there but the writers were so strong, we really didn't have to do anything. Yeah. Going back to my original point of, you know, the writing on the page is already funny. There's right. no reason to make it funnier. Yeah. You know, it's already funny. So, yeah, it's we stuck to the page. I think, because we discussed that earlier, but I think the segues that, that you have to do is it's still staying on the page in a comedy drama, you know, it's mm -hmm. that, you know, that's a tough, that's that's you know it takes some keen choices uh to oh yeah i mean you you and you better be on point too don't don't fuck around and do a, a horrible choice that has nothing to do with the scene like you're like yeah you know what i think i'm gonna do the roomba like what the fuck does that have to do with this scene <laughs> that's, just, good. Not why, good. that's not good why are you doing a roomba when they, they, you know the, the kid just got shot around the corner that, that doesn't fit oh, no. in that no. scene i mean it. yeah I'm glad we had you show your dancing skills, but <laughs> you know, that's, that that's not the wrong show. You're saying you're saying that, Mike, because you've seen that kind of behavior. Oh no, no, I've seen I've seen it on auditions where. Uh, oh, oh yes, yeah. yes. No, no, I want to hear this. I want to hear this. Oh, oh yeah, I've seen it on auditions. Yeah, my favorite go. one was when I I used to live in New York, and um, this is when uh, I believe. This is good going back. This was early 2000s, maybe 99, something like that. I don't know. I forgot what year, but it's like the early, it was for, they gave me a scene from uh, the Cosby show, the early Cosby show, because it was mm. for another show, but they wanted to see, uh, and this was for the later, because I think Cosby had another show on CBS. Mm -hmm. Right. So the line was, I'm trying to sell him a car. So the line was, so you want this car, huh? You want, And you're supposed to be a car salesman. And the the bit or the gag is, um, and I don't know if you've seen this episode of Cosby shows when, you know, Theo and uh, Bill come in dressed all raggedy so they don't think they're that rich so they could get a better deal on the car. Mm -hmm. 
So, and the line was, oh, uh, you you interested in this car? Okay, you like this car? Okay. So it's supposed to be something smooth, like a, like a car salesman would be, right? Right. So I'm doing my lines and I'm sitting there and there's another gentleman sitting across and he's, I mean, he's in the line. Remember I said, it's just, do you want this car? But he's like, I mean, he's really into, I'm like, God, that's, that's kind of not hard for you to say that line. He's like, and, and he was just amped up. And then he gets up, call him in. Now I'm sitting behind the door. They close the door and they said, and then I could hear him like, it's kind of thin walls. Like, so are you ready? To do this, like, yeah, I'm ready. I'm ready. He goes, they slate their name, say their name. All of a sudden, he goes, and action. Then he goes, Do you want this fucking car? I mean, I was like, <laughs> and, and uh, my head popped up, I'm like, What? And the person's like, Whoa, whoa, whoa. <laughs> there was no fucking car in there. I'm like, Brother, who are you selling a car to? What is this in the Middle East? What is going on? Right. I'm oh. like, Wow. And the yeah. person's like, Okay, okay, let's uh, rein it back a little bit. <laughs> so, Oh yeah, no, I've I've uh, I've seen it. I've yeah. seen it. I've seen it. And you know, we've all been I'm sure I've done it myself. I know I've I've messed up many a commercial um because I've thought, oh, like going back to your, your the original point, oh, it's a funny commercial, let me make it funnier. And it right. just was just it was just a shit storm. The person was like, Thank you, thank you so much. I, I don't even think they opened up the lens to, to record me, they just closed the camera and they were like, Thank you, take care. All yeah. right. No, no, no. We validated you on the why you were here. No, you're good. Bye, bye. So, would you say uh, the the older you get, uh, you become more? I don't want to say. I'm just gonna say it, like because I feel the older I get with comedy, I get better and more crisp, and I, I get oh, yeah. sharper. Would yeah. you say that that flip side as an actor too? Yes. Yes, it is because you learn. And the older you get, and you'll see this, uh, Keith. You know, uh, you'll see this. You'll start listening. Okay. And you and I. Re I remember, still to this day, Dave Chappelle and Chris Rock said something. Dave, Ch I'll start with Dave Chappelle. Dave Ch Chappelle said, "Don't be afraid of the silence." Mm -hmm. That was the thing he said. Don't be afraid because sometimes if they're silent, that means they're listening. Now, you know, people are looking at the watch and glass clinking and all that, and then, then you're bombing. Right. But, but if they're signed, that means they're listening. Take your time in developing uh, whatever story or joke you're doing. And Chris Rock said that comedy is an old man's game, meaning the older you get, the more experience you get and the more things you can talk about right. and the more experiences you can draw from and craft and you have a certain amount of friends and then your friends will give you bits and you'd be able to take from this person. Take, Cause that's what uh, um, my old acting coach would say. He said, hang out with funny people because they can only make you funny because you'll always start thinking of jokes. You'll always be crafting mm -hmm. something and you could always draw something from their experiences and how they craft their jokes. And then they could give you their own um, uh, experience of how, what they feel like that will make you stronger and it only makes you stronger. And just like anything else, life, wisdom, life experience, it makes you stronger because you like, like you said, it, it just makes you crisper and you know how to get to the joke faster. Yeah. You know, it's, and not, it, go. Yeah, it's kind of like, uh, like, this is why, like, I, I believe podcasting is like literally the huge future for comedy and also drama and storytelling, too, because oh, yeah. I feel like, you know, just chatting with you for an hour, you know regardless on our level skills, if we're the same, better, worse, we could all learn from each other. You know what I mean? And make us oh, yeah. a better artist. Oh yeah, because you have to, because if you say the one the one thing you don't want to say is, aha, I got it, because then you're fucked. Right. Because then, 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 then there's no room to grow, there's no room to get better. Nah, I mean, I still watch Eddie Murphy Delirious or Eddie Murphy Raw, Richard Pryor Live in Concert, or even sure, going sure. back to I mean, and this is another thing that Eddie Murphy told Chris Rock. He said, always keep researching, like Woody Allen's show of shows before, you know, he dated his daughter and all that shit. <laughs> I mean, uh, yeah. or married or whatever that is, but all of that, the Bill Cosby show, uh, when, not not the one in um, the 80s, but the one in the 60s when he was a, one of the few uh, black men to have his own show in right. the 60s, have his own show um, and stay on for, you know, a nice 
I mean, even though it was only a, a year or so, but still, it was his own show. And he was a comedian, and it was him or or Flip Wilson or Jack. Oh, uh, I mean, I mean, I did all the honeymooners stuff like that. You know, you go back and forth because a lot of the stuff, a lot of the bits, those are our forefathers. You know, yeah. And you always are learning, so it doesn't matter. You know, how well, many years you've done it. I mean, you've always learned. Yeah. Well, I I have two more questions, and one of them has nothing to do with you. But um, <laughs> okay. Uh, I was wondering, <laughs> like, I'm just being honest. That's like, a did, great interview question. <laughs> I love that. Did you did you see the new coming to America, and what what were your thoughts? I, I saw the coming. Uh, yes, why, my uh, Alan, you want to say something? You you had oh, no, your thoughts? No, no, I'm okay. Go ahead and oh. answer. Yeah, uh, uh, my my thoughts were like this. Um, I knew it wasn't going to be any better than the first one. I already I went in there look, going in there with mm -hmm. that mindset because. The first one is one of my favorite movies of all time. Yeah. It's a classic. And I was like, at first I was mad. I was like, I, I was like one of those, I was one of like the Britney protesters. Leave coming to America alone, you <laughs> bastard. You don't deserve a sequel. Leave it alone. That's what I was like. I was saying to myself, you do sure. not, don't, because sure. I was, because it was just that precious to me. I was like, don't fuck this up. Yeah. And then they started coming out with the writers. I do like Kenya Barris, and I do like some of the cast members. And it was more of nostalgia to me. It was like, oh, I remember that. They were bringing some of the old folks back from the old, uh, from the, the original. Right. And we were doing a lot of CGI stuff. It was entertaining. Was it the funniest movie I've seen? No, it was yeah. not. There were some funny parts, but it wasn't the funniest movie I've seen. And uh, out of that, I, I say it was like a I, I was like a six out of ten, just oh, above average. Ah, uh, high! Wow. Yeah, it was just above average. I mean, I have like I mean, a, maybe because I'm biased because because <laughs> I'm an Eddie Murphy fan, right? So I was like, you know, so maybe that's why. And it was nostalgic, so I was like, oh, I remember that group. But they were bringing out every hip hop black artist from the '80s and '90s. <laughs> I was like, I was in middle school with Salt and Pepper, and I was like, what the hell? Are you? <laughs> In Vogue, I was like, what a king, what a king. I was like, okay, now we're getting corny. Well, but, uh, but yeah, that's what I gave it, you know. Yeah. Well, see, like, like my, my review is I, I'm a huge Paul Bates fan because I think for a character actor, his scene in the first one was just so classic. And then, oh, what you know, that? yeah. And then this one, it, they kind of like, I felt like they kind of wrote, wrote those characters off where they just put them in to put them in. Mm -hmm. But I will say, I thought Jermaine Flower was fantastic in it. Really? Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. He was. He was. I. I mean, honestly, I was a little off with him. Tell yeah. you the truth. Yeah. I, I, yeah. I was. I wasn't feeling him too much. Like the other. Like I think that the cast around him, I liked. Uh, the Leslie Jones did a good job. Now, honestly, my favorite character was Wesley Snipes. Yeah. I <laughs> I thought he was just hilarious. I don't know what's going on. He was hysterical. Every yeah. time he came on, I laughed. I laughed out loud. I mean, I agree. I yeah, he, he was all was, geeky. He was geeking out. He was dancing in because so my king. I'm like, it, was just, <laughs> it was just funny. It was just yeah. he was funny. He made it entertaining for me. I was like, okay, yeah. all right. I mean, the thing about you know, but the story. I thought the storyline could have been stronger. Um, I thought there was some decent moments. Um, but like I said, I, 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 everybody was mad. Was like, oh, it sucked. Oh my god, because they were going in with that. Oh, it's gonna be better than the, the you know, the first one. Yeah. And that's that. That was never gonna happen. That was. Oh never, yeah, definitely. I, yeah. I mean, I knew that from from jump. So I think I already had my mindset ready. I mean, there's a certain, there's a few movies that I know will not top. You know, the original. Like, you know, for me, it's like Beverly Hills Cop, Friday, Coming to America. Trading places. Uh, trading places. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, like coming out with a trading places too. I was like, trading places again. No, <laughs> no, we're not doing that. You know, it's certain movies you should just leave alone because they just, they just are, were so, uh, the sign of their time is so significant. I mean, yeah. it was just, it was just great. So, like, like I said, it was, it was good. I mean, hey, Amazon, I'm sure is loving it because it was the highest streamed. Uh, content ever yeah. in the history of that company. 
So mm -hmm. Bezos is like, oh, well, I guess I'll be getting another apartment out in Manhattan, another jet. <laughs> so well, I'm sure he's not too hard. Well, you're, you're going to beat that record when, when your thing comes out. I, oh, I, thank you, brother. Yeah. I appreciate it, man. So, thank you. Hopefully. Hopefully. Yeah. You know. And then my last question, um, yeah, you, you, you just booked the Upshaws. Yes, I did. Uh, I've... Yeah. I've never seen it, but I always see it streaming on my thing, like, watch this. And it always has, like, the best ratings. What, what can you right. tell us about this without spoiling? Well, oh, I, actually, I think that's Ron Black show, Keith. I hope y'all haven't come out yet, but thank you. I appreciate that. Uh. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, no, but the, the Upshaws is uh, with uh, Wanda Sykes and Mike Epps mm -hmm. um, and Kim Fields. And the show is about a family in Indianapolis trying to make do with uh, a, a mechanic who is now married, but has a baby mom on the side. Mm -hmm. And he is trying to um, straddle that line between a good father and a good baby daddy. Uh -huh. And, and those two worlds keep colliding and he's always doing missteps. If you could think of, I guess, uh, like I said, if, if Blackish Dre from Blackish was a mechanic or Archie Bunker, was now living in Indianapolis and Archie Bunker had a side chick and he got her pregnant. Right. So it's one of those things. Um, but it deals, but it goes into the um, uh, the narrative of what I was talking about, where it does talk about certain issues, political and gender and uh, place, but it's funny. Okay. And it gets silly. Um, and uh, I've been Regina Hicks, who did uh, the show Girlfriends. Um, and she has another pilot coming out um, that I auditioned for, but I didn't get, but I'm not bitter. Uh, she is doing a lot of big things. So looking forward to that, man. They said um, it should be coming out in spring. So look out for that. It's called The Upshaws with Mike Epps and Wanda Sykes and Upshaw. Kim Fields, who is amazing, along with myself and Paige Kennedy and Diamond Lewis. Um, it's uh, really good, and it's it was just a blessing, man. That yeah, that kind of saved me from the pandemic, man. Because uh, it was your, your boy was uh, losing it for a while. Because this yeah. day at home learning, I like I I can't do it anymore. I was zoomed out. Did you so. did you film it? Did you film it during the pandemic, or did you film it before the pandemic? <clears throat> we started before the pandemic, uh -huh. and then we had to stop, like everybody else, when Hollywood shut down, and then we started again in November. Uh, with our, our, our COVID protocols. So once we got there, we got tested uh, twice. We got uh, fast testing. Uh, we got tested uh, when, once we got there, the swab and then fast testing. And then, and then we just had masks on and gloves and hazmat suits. And then we just did our thing. And we, ta we basically taped, we did we, this 10 episodes all together. We did five and then we did the final five. Now, does that? I'm I'm sorry if I'm like on this subject because I I interviewed um Kurt Fuller and he was he's on Evil and he said that it threw him off as an actor with this uh, COVID because when you rehearse you do the lines and then when you film you take off the mask and he said it just felt like not normal. How did it feel for you? It was it was well honestly it was kind of weird because. Before you used to be able to come out your trailer and you know talk to people and mingle. Now they're like, no, no, just go in the trailer and wait for your scene. And they give us little watches. If you got too close to people, you just buzz. So you're like, hey, hey sorry, too close. Uh, got to get back to uh, wow. my little catering wow. truck. Yeah. So, and then um, my my role is not really. It wasn't uh, like that. Um, it was more so the chemistry. Our chemistry was starting to build up. I right. would say. And that's where we had to get back into the, the flow of things because we were getting to a part where we got we knew each other's rhythms and you know you're starting to understand okay I know how he's going to deliver this line or she's going to deliver this line I'm going to counter with that so it was a great tennis match going on there like with comedy like I'm I'm actually going to be mad nervous when I actually get back on stage oh me too because definitely I'm going to oh. be super nervous I'm going to be like probably like when the first time I ever did come because I don't know what the rhythm is going to be like. Right. I don't know if I'm going to be talking too fast or if I'm going to be mumbling my words. If, you know, if I hear something in the side, am I going to be able to, before I used to be able to pick it up and then 
into weaving into my set. Am I going to be able to do that? So, but there is going to be an excitement, but there is an excitement, but I don't know. You know what I'm scared of? And, and like, we'll leave it on this. I'm scared of when comedy comes back to how it, you know, was, I I'm scared that it's going to be like when I first started again, first two right. years, fucking terrible. And you had that one good set, you know, <laughs> right. And then you're right. like, oh, all right. I'm back. <laughs> right. I'm back, baby. I'm back. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I'm and then you're like, oh, God, you're going to feel like an open micer again. You're going to be like, oh, oh yeah. Oh, <laughs> oh, yeah. You'll go home. Like, why, why am I doing this to myself? I, I, I went to school. I have a degree. What am I doing? <laughs> what am I doing? This is ridiculous. And then you get one good laugh. Oh, yeah. I'm back. That's great. I'm in. <laughs> I don't want to do anything. I don't want to I'm do gonna, anything. Just, I'm going to be like, Mike, I think I bombed and the ghost <laughs> took my pills again. <laughs> yeah, it goes. I'm like, okay, it's all right. It's all right. Look, son, dig him out the toilet. You'll be fine, son. You'll be all right. You know, it happens. No, no, it, it's like that, bro. But yeah, it's about chemistry. As far as being on the set, it was just getting that chemistry back. And once that chemistry is back, like they say, getting back on a bike, and it's like, oh, I remember this. And I think that's how it's going to be for stand-up. Like, oh, I remember this. I mean, oh. it might take a little longer no for doubt. others. Yes, sir. I have said no doubt. Oh, yeah. Yeah. That, yeah. That's so, a good band, too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 I got to look at that. Yeah, no doubt. Right. <laughs> yeah. Mike, uh, where can the folks at home follow you? Twitter, Instagram? Yes. You can follow me on IG at Mike Estime Comic. That's M I K E E S T I M E C O M I C. That's my IG. And my Twitter account is at M E S T I M E 42. That's me style 42. So you could follow me there and uh, look up all my upcoming uh, events, shows, whatnot. And uh, yeah, man, it's a, it's, it's been something, but uh, I'm looking forward to 2021. It started off a little rough, but I think it's going to be on an upswing soon. So I'm looking forward to it. Yeah, I'm, I'm looking forward to it, too. It started off rough, and then uh, I interviewed you, and, like, now I have hope. Like, well, you, exactly. <laughs> like, uh, exactly. Uh, it was very well, that's fun. What I'm, here for, man. I'm here for I'm your, I'm your upper. I'm that, I'm that cocaine shot, you know. I'm oh. that, uh, <laughs> yeah, hey, you know. I'm that I'm that black magic for you, brother. Don't worry about it. I'm here for you. Yeah. So, but hey, I, I look at it this way, and that and uh, to leave on this, I mean, with this pandemic, as much as uh, has gone wrong, I know you know with the wrong, there's always a right, and That's right. we all always have to be the ultimate optimist because once you see that, you you'll be seeing as opposed to what's wrong in the world, what's right in the world, and that's how you just continue moving on and. And move and just uh, getting to that next level of yourself and that higher self, because then you won't let things affect you as much. You'll be yeah. seeing the humor and the beauty and the joy in things. And that's how I, I choose to approach things from this point forward. Because once you start, you know, taking yourself too seriously, taking life too seriously, then you got a problem. Then things start um, looking as bleak as you always see them to be. But once you start, you know, Start saying busy, but you know, I, I like, like I have to say, uh, I'm like to be uh, tired of being busy instead of busy being tired. Right. You know what I'm saying? I don't want to be, oh, I'm exhausted. I got to do this. No, you get up, see what the day has to unfold for you, you know, mm. and go from there. And, you know, there's those little Easter eggs there. And happy Easter to everybody, by the way. I know it's coming up. <laughs> if you're not, and if you're not Kath, Chris, I apologize. You know, yeah, it's, it's all good. Yeah. Well, Mike, uh, thank you so much for taking time and uh, chatting with us. I, I, uh, I had a blast, man. Like you, maybe oh, really. You. You know, this was thank the highlight you. of my day, and I really appreciate you. So, thank you so much, Keith Allen. Appreciate you, Keith. Looking forward to seeing you in the clubs, man. Oh, yes. Don't be a stranger. Oh, yes. Alan, appreciate you. I uh, hope you. that lesbian bit works out. Uh, we'll try to we'll try, we'll try to work we'll try to workshop that one in man don't worry about <laughs> it keep doing your thing but you guys have been awesome thank you for having me and please thank again you. Check out, yes and check out the upshores coming up in the spring um you'll you won't be sorry and again hopefully off love you'll be seeing it uh in uh 2023 all right well thanks mike have a good day pal and uh enjoy one. the rest of your night i appreciate it thank you god bless bye guys
Bye bye. All right. That was awesome, man. It was indeed. All right. So was that was nice. that was fun. That was uh with Mike Estime, guys. Subscribe brand review. Alan, how did you like it? I loved it. I thought he was just a sweetheart, and I will be more than glad to approach him uh, to book me. And also, um, what else can I ask him? Oh, to be on his show. To be on yeah. this show as, uh, as a walk-on. Maybe a couple of lines. Maybe one line. All right. And so the line will be like, be, hey. Uh, <laughs> the line will be, hey. <laughs> oh. Are Subscribe, rate, review on Apple Podcasts. Follow us everywhere. Razor Riffs. Alan Lee, we'll see you next time, buddy. I certainly hope so. All right. Bye. Later. Peace out. Peace. You're listening to Razor Riffs with Keith Razor and Alan Lee right here on LA Talk Radio.